Hello, this is Analytics Superstars, and welcome to Chapter 11, Bivariate Analysis. As the prefix by suggests, we're talking about working with two variables at a time. Uh, just like uh, how a bicycle has two wheels or how being bilingual means knowing two languages. Uh, in statistics, bivariate analysis allows us to explore relationships between two variables, helping us uncover patterns, correlations, and sometimes even surprises. Uh, this chapter is all about understanding uh, how two variables relate to each other and using the tools at our disposal to quantify and analyze those relationships. So let's get started. Indeed, why does looking at two variables at once matter? Well, uh, in many situations, a single variable does not really tell the whole story. Uh, for example, does the amount of money spent on marketing uh, correlate with higher sales? Is there a link between hours of study and exam performance? Uh, does customer satisfaction vary with income level? Bivariate analysis allows us to answer these types of questions. It's also a powerful way to look for relationships between variables in your data, which is especially important when you're trying to make data-driven decisions. Now, before diving into any calculations, the first step in bivariate analysis is often so-called exploratory data analysis, EDA, using visualizations. There are a couple of go-to tools for this. Uh, Cross-tabulations, also known as contingency tables, are especially useful when you're dealing with categorical variables. For instance, if we want to know if gender has an impact on product preferences, uh, we could create a table that shows uh, the number of males, females, and non-binary individuals who prefer different product types. It gives us an initial view of whether there's an association. When working with continuous variables, uh, scatter plots are incredibly useful. Uh, a scatter plot uh, lets you visually inspect the relationship between two quantitative variables like hours studied and test scores. If the points on the plot seem to form a line or curve, uh, we might suspect a relationship which leads us to the next step, quantifying it. Remember, visual inspection is a great start, but it's not the finish line. It gives us clues about possible relationships, but we need to dig deeper to be certain of what we're actually seeing. After looking at a plot or a table, you might say these two variables seem to move together. But how do you measure that relationship? Ah, well, that's where correlation comes into play. The correlation gives us a way to quantify the strength and direction of a linear relationship between two quantitative variables. Uh, for continuous data, we often use the Pearson correlation coefficient, denoted by R, to assess linear relationships between such variables. So here's what you need to know about R. If R equals 1, there is a perfect positive correlation. As one variable increases, the other also increases in a perfectly linear way. If R equals minus 1, then there is a perfect negative correlation. As one variable increases, the other decreases in a perfectly linear way. And if R equals zero, there is no linear relationship. The variables don't move together in any predictable way, at least not linearly. Now, most real world data falls somewhere in between. And part of the challenge in bivariate analysis is figuring out how strong that relationship is and whether it's meaningful. Uh, values of R close to plus minus 0.7 uh, may suggest a fairly strong relationship, while values closer to zero might indicate weak or no correlation. Now, for categorical data, we talk about association rather than correlation. Uh, this could be measured using tools like the chi-squared test, which helps us determine whether uh, the variables in a cross-tabulation are related to each other. Now, here's uh, the big statistical portion. Correlation does not imply causation. Just because two variables are correlated doesn't mean one is actually causing the other. For example, uh, ice cream sales and sunburn may be correlated, but buying ice cream doesn't cause sunburn. Uh, both are related to sunny weather. Now, to avoid falling into this trap, and in particular, beware spurious correlations, that is, relationships that appear by chance, it's important to combine statistical analysis with sound reasoning. Ask yourself whether there's a plausible theoretical explanation for why changes in one variable would actually cause changes in the other. 
In some cases, uh, external factors or hidden variables, known as confounding variables, uh, might be uh, driving both of the observed variables. Now, in today's era of big data, when we can analyze countless combinations of variables, uh, finding spurious relationships is a very real risk. So to help prevent this, always perform a common sense check, a reality check. Does this relationship make sense? Uh, can I think of a reason why one variable might actually influence the other? Now, once you've calculated a correlation coefficient or performed a chi-square test, how do we know if the relationship is real or just due to chance? So this is where hypothesis testing comes in. We set up two hypotheses. Uh, the null hypothesis would be that there is no relationship between the variables and the alternative hypothesis that there is. Then, uh, based on the p-value from our statistical test, we decide whether we have enough statistical evidence to justify rejecting the null hypothesis. So let's say you're a business analyst working for a company that wants to understand whether the uh, amount of money spent on online ads is related to sales. Uh, you could create a scatter plot of ad spend on the x-axis versus sales on the y-axis. Look for patterns in the scatter plot. If the points tend to rise together, you might suspect a positive correlation. Calculate the correlation coefficient. Uh, suppose you find R equals 0.85. This suggests a strong positive linear relationship. And so as ad spend increases, sales increase. Then perform a hypothesis test to determine if the correlation is statistically significant. If the p-value is less than 0.05, you can conclude that the relationship is meaningful. However, be cautious about causality. Uh, before rushing to say that more ad spending causes more sales, uh, you should consider other possible factors. Maybe it's not the ad spend itself driving sales, but rather the time of year or the quality of the ad content. So bivariate analysis is an essential tool in the data analyst toolbox because it helps us move beyond looking at single variables in isolation. By exploring relationships between two variables, we can gain deeper insights, identify important patterns, and start to make more informed decisions. Uh, through visual tools like scatter plots and cross tabulations, we begin with a qualitative understanding of the data. And by calculating correlation coefficients and assessing associations, we move into a more quantitative realm. But remember, uh, the golden rule of bivariate analysis is to always keep in mind that correlation is not causation. Uh, statistical relationships can provide valuable clues, but interpreting them wisely uh, requires careful thought and sometimes a healthy dose of skepticism. So, superstars, are you ready? Uh, if you're positively correlated with me, then yes, you are. <laughs>